Just going to wait a few minutes to let people join the, the Zoom. That's about it, Katie. Yeah, it doesn't look like we have anyone else filtering in at the moment. All right, well, we'll go ahead and get started then. Good evening. At this time, we're going to start the public meeting for the PRC 421 decommissioning project draft envir environmental impact report. It's February 10th, 2020, or 2022, sorry, a little after 6 p.m. Welcome. And thank you for your interest in this project. My name is Eric Gillis. I'm the Assistant Chief of the Environmental Planning and Management Division of the California State Lands Commission. As lead agency, we've, we have prepared a draft environmental impact report, or EIR, for this project in compliance with the California Environmental Equality Act, or CEQA. Next slide, please. All of you are joining the Zoom meeting currently the currently see the slide showing notes of the format of the meeting. Please note that this meeting is being, being recorded. We have a presentation to share with you describing the project and the contents of the EIR. When the presentation is complete, we will give more detailed instructions on how to comment in the Zoom or by phone and then open the meeting to public comments. Next slide, please. So our agenda includes introductions and the purpose of this meeting, contents of the draft EIR, and receipt of public comments that are delivered today. We had an afternoon meeting, um, which had the same agenda and presentation. State Lands Commission has prepared the draft EIR for this project with the assistance of Padre Associates. The commission is working with ExxonMobil as they will be carrying out the project decommissioning of the piers and caissons. There's a joint review panel for the project made up by the state lands, the city of Goleta and California Coastal Commission. With me on the Zoom panel, the state lands is Joe Fable from our legal division, Jeff Plank from our marine mineral resources management division. We also have Jen Layton, and Simon Poulter of Padre Associates. And then our Zoom host is Katie Robinson Phillip. Next slide, please. The purpose of this meeting is to obtain agency and public input and comment on the project and environmental analysis covered in the EIR. We will be accepting uh, comments, but not engage in extensive question and answer sessions at this meeting. Comments can also be provided in writing by email or letter through March 7th. I'll have more on that later. Uh, next slide, please. CEQA applies to projects that require discretionary approval from state and local agencies. Preparation of an EIR is required when evidence indicates that the proposed project could have a potential significant impact on the environment. Next slide, please. This slide shows the EIR process beginning with the notice of preparation that was released last June. It was followed by preparing the draft EIR 
then released to the, for the public review on January uh, 21st, and now the public meeting. Next, we'll, re we'll be receiving comments on the draft EIR, preparing responses to comments that will be provided in the final EIR, <clears throat> and taking the final EIR to the commission meeting for certification scheduled on April 26, 2022. Next slide, please. And now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Simon Poulter, where he'll present the contents of the EIR. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'm joined this, this evening with uh, Jen Layton, who was the project manager for this. I was the uh, principal in charge. Uh, I'm going to go through a summary of the document, which will include the project description, the alternatives that were looked at uh, during the course of the review, the areas resource areas that we addressed during the EIR, and then finally a, a review of any impacts that we identified and uh, associated mitigations as appropriate. Next slide, please. The purpose and need of this uh, project is the uh, decommissioning and or final disposition of the 421 pier and associated facilities. These are rather old facilities associated with early development back in the 1929-30 period. Um, decommissioning is now ready to move forward with the caissons due to the uh, recent completion of the plugging of the two wells associated with those piers. Uh, the, the intent of removing these structures is really a, a beneficial one to remove these uh, aging structures from the, the surface uh, of the uh, active beach there in Elwood and uh, that would eliminate a public and environmental risk. Next slide, please. The project is located um, immediately south of the uh, Sandpiper Golf Course. The site can be accessed off of Hollister Avenue through either the Elwood onshore facility and a roadway, private roadway that goes through the Sandpiper Golf Course to an access road. Um, we are also considering a separate access through the Bacaro Resort area. In the slide or the picture in the right, you can see a, a blow up detail of the two caissons and the associated piers. The caissons are the square rectangular objects uh, in the picture, uh, 421 number one and number two. And then the pier structures go out to the uh, to these piers or to these caissons. Uh, the roadway then uh, accesses uh, both of these. Next slide, please. We've broken the project up into two components. One involves the caissons and the associated piers. The second is the access road and the associated uh, production pipelines, pier abutments, and uh, seawall that was used. We have also included, for the portions of these analysis, two uh, equipment staging areas, one adjacent to the Elwood onshore facility and another adjacent to the Bacara fire road access. Uh, access would be either via the road or by the beach. Next slide, please. More detailed, the component one uh, involves both the staging of equipment for the temporary access to the site, and this would include uh, building a ramp down to the beach for portions of the decommissioning, uh, as well as access along the roadway to the caissons and piers. Uh, it would involve the removal of the caissons, um, in a fashion similar to what you're seeing in the picture in the lower uh, portion of the slide, um, where the caisson will be uh, is a, will be removed using mechanical equipment. The pier um, would then be removed after the caisson. Uh, the pipelines that were supporting these operations would be flushed and isolated as part of this component. Next slide, please. This uh, is a picture uh, just expanding on the view, the view of both the caissons. Caisson number one, uh, 421 number one was a water disposal well. This is the remaining wellhead and surface of that structure. The one in the lower left-hand corner is caisson number two. Uh, that shows the, the well and a, and a sump that was associated with it. The picture on the right is a, a view of the uh, pier structures, uh, which are similar for both caissons. Next slide, please. Component two involves the removal of the access road, which contains a two inch and six inch diameter pipeline. It also, the road is, is retained in its current location by a rock, uh, wooden seawall and rock 
revetment adjacent to it, and that would be removed. And then the site finally graded back to uh, a near uh, original condition and uh, any remaining debris removed. Next slide, please. As required by CEQA, we looked at uh, two alternatives in this case. One is required, the no project alternative, which would simply mean no action as proposed. The second would be just the, the removal of the caissons and the pier structure and not the implementation of component two, leaving the road in, in its current state. Next slide, please. To support the development of the EIR analysis, we went through a series of technical studies to support this. It included a air quality and greenhouse gas calculations based on the equipment to be used during the process. Uh, case on number two currently had or what had been observed historically as supporting uh, a bat roost. So a study regarding that um, bat roost was conducted. A wetland delineation report was prepared for the project. There is a, a well-documented wetland adjacent to 421 number two, but there are also isolated wetlands in relationship to the road. And of course, um, in the area of Bell Creek, uh, which is adjacent to the access road. A bluff, bluff retreat study was looked at uh, to look at both historical and uh, potential bluff retreat, depending on the removal of the caissons and uh, potentially the roadway as part of component two. Then we also completed an archeological report um, to identify any sensitive archeological resources in the area. And then uh, a coastal processes study, um, which is actually Part of the results of that are depicted in the picture on the right, which looked at changes to the beach once you remove the caisson and potentially the access road uh, and riprap. Um, this diagram gives you an idea of the wave um, blocking feature that the uh, caissons have on the beach. And we wanted to make sure we understood once they were removed what we might see as far as changes to the conditions in the area. We also did two separate um, assessments for potential contamination, one associated with the roadway and the seawall uh, due to the historic uh, nature of the facilities. We wanted to make sure there was, uh, we had an understanding of any potential contamination. I will note, we do know that there is contamination within the caissons themselves. So we didn't do a separate study for that. That had already been done. And then finally, making a determination if there is any asbestos and lead-based paint, just again, because of the age of the structures. Next slide, please. Potential impacts were assessed uh, during the course of our review for a number of issue areas. Uh, these are highlighted in the bullets here. Um, these are consistent with uh, many of the issue areas that we would expect. Um, aesthetics, air quality, biological resources. I mentioned we have gone, uh, done a, a review just not only because of the removal activities on the beach, but also the access road is in close proximity to the sensitive resources in the Bell Creek area. Um, cultural resource uh, assessment also included consultation with native tribal groups in the area. Um, and as well as in the analysis, we include summaries associated with some of the hazardous materials. The hydrology and water quality analysis particularly focused on work associated with uh, the removal of the potential contaminants that are known to occur within the caissons themselves and potentially in, in the roadway. Um, and the remainder of the, the subject areas obviously are, are summarized here. Uh, potential impacts were identified predominantly associated with the construction, as well as the potential for release of hydrocarbons uh, during the removal of both the caissons and or the road. All impacts were deemed less than significant um, and mitigation was identified to reduce those impacts um, to that level. Next slide, please. We did also include uh, recognition of the beneficial impacts from the project, which of course is removing these structures and uh, their associated uh, uh, contamination and in the caissons itself. Also that removal will uh, eliminate the potential of impacts to the public who use the beach area and the surrounding natural environment. Recreational opportunities were the increase of uh, a quarter, or 0.4 acres of 
sandy area associated with where the parent caisson are located. Next slide, please. And finally, uh, as noted, a number of the impacts were identified as potentially significant, but mitigation was successfully identified to address those issues. The predominant uh, focus was on uh, associated with handling of any contaminants that were associated with the facility, and that is proactively handled in the remedial action plan that would uh, identify how the hazardous materials would be handled. There are also additional plans in the case of a, an accidental release of those materials, such as an OS flow plan and hazardous material plan. Aesthetic impacts were addressed through adequate staging of, or shielding of staging areas and also keeping equipment and minimizing, uh, keeping equipment out of areas where active, um, that can be actively seen when they're not in use and also minimizing nighttime light, lighting issues that are associated with the potential for working at night due to the tidal cycles that would require op nighttime operations. Air emissions were primarily associated with fugitive dust for tracking of equipment and then exhaust emissions from, the, from that same equipment. The uh, avoidance of biological resources was proposed through a number of biological measures including monitoring during the uh, actual activities. And this is, was associated with both the actual work area and the staging area close to Bell Creek. Cultural resource issues were addressed through training of the crews to make sure they were aware of in, in the event of any um, in, uh, identification of cultural resources that that uh, would be avoided. And then finally, recreational beach access will be main, maintained throughout the project to the extent feasible. Um, even though there will be heavy equipment on the beach, um, the intent is to try to maintain passage along through the area. So I'll turn it back over to Eric to discuss the project schedule or the uh, schedule of the EIR process. Yeah, thanks, Simon. Um, this slide provides the current schedule. I provide much of this information in the EIR process slide, but I want to highlight a couple um, that comments on the draft EIR are due Monday, uh, March 7th. We plan to release the final EIR in early April and take the document and consider the project at the April 26th commission hearing. Uh, deconstruction of component one would be scheduled for late summer and fall of this year. At this time, there is no funding to implement component two and currently um, and would require separate permitting. Um, next slide, please. Okay, before we open up to comments, this slide provides some Zoom instructions and Katie will then call on speakers. Attendees will be muted until we unmute you. If you'd like to make a comment, please raise your, use the raise hand feature and we'll unmute you and call on you to speak. Uh, for written comments, you could use the chat feature. If you want to type a comment, click on chat and type your comment in the chat bar. Uh, at this time, it doesn't look like anybody's phoned in, so um, you won't have to worry about um, the telephone information. Um, or you could also email or mail comments after the meeting and send by March 7th. Um, and go ahead and open it to comments, Katie. Thank you, I had to find my unmute. Um, so we have one hand raised. So um, Carla Frisk, I will uh, give you access to unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, I think I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Carla. How are you doing? Hi, good. How are y'all doing? Good. I was sitting here thinking, well, these are the days when you do this from your living room. I still can't quite get used to it. But anyway, <laughs> I wanted to just begin. I'm representing Get Oil Out. Um, and I did get a copy of the document. Thank you so much. I uh, did be able to read everything, but I went through it a bit. And um, I just wanted to say, well, number one, I know this is not where you save our comments with State Lands Commission, but we're really thrilled that the State Lands Commission has moved forward with this really important project uh, and moved it in a really exemplary fashion and not letting it uh, just 
you know, poke along. So uh, we're thrilled that we have the environmental document now and that we're moving forward towards, um, you know, certifying that and getting before the state lands commission. So I just want to thank the commission and the staff for, for doing that um, in, a, in a timely fashion. Uh, I, my comments today, I think are going to be focused, uh, you know, I went through some of the impacts. It looks like you guys have got it covered as far as I can tell. Uh, so the main concern I think I want to express for GOO today is the issue relating to component two. Um, and I understand that there are some unresolved issues around that. And I'm hoping that staff during this period can see if there are ways to resolve those um, the components. Uh, Parts of component two uh, are really critical parts there, the seawall and some of the other things along there that would never have been there if it had not been for the development of this oil. And I'm not sure I completely understand how that occurred or whether there's any liability on the property owner's part to have to remove that. But I think it really is critical that somehow we are able to get component two removed at the same time as component one. Like the discussion in the environmentally superior alternative, not doing a project is going to result in these things deteriorating. Uh, and in the case of component one, obviously it has uh, more impacts with the oil and, and uh, potentially oil spills and such. But the hazardous materials, hazardous, and I don't mean that in, in that sense, but hazards, the hazards associated with allowing component two parts to just deteriorate and end up on the beach are pretty significant. And um, so I think we're concerned about how, what can happen to make component two move forward. And um, I know some of it might be funding, but also, uh, you know, the property owners, do they have any, are they required to do anything or were the oil companies just allowed to build the stuff and then walk away, which seems very frustrating if that's the case. Um, so I, I think the schedule's great and we look forward to, you know, either appearing before the State Lands Commission in April or I guess being on Zoom again, hopefully not. But anyway, I think that's the, that would sum up the comments that Goo has right now. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Carla. Appreciate it. You know, I don't see any more hands. So we'll go ahead and Go back to the presentation. The next slide, please. All right, this site provides how to comment after this meeting via email or mail by March 7th. The email is sequa.comments at slc.ca.gov. Please write PRC 421 decommissioning project draft DIR comments in the email subject line. Um, please, please be sure to include your name and contact information so we could add you to the project notification list. For mail, please send my attention to 100 Howe Avenue. Suite 100 South, Sacramento, California, 95825. Um, we anticipate the next public meeting um, to be at the commission uh, April 26th, when the final EIR would be considered for certification and take action on the project. Um, next slide, please. Um, in the meantime, please contact me with any qu concerns or questions. This concludes the meeting. And we thank you for your interest in the project, your comments, and your attendance. Thank you.